best thing was, oh, first of all, we're, uh, I just read somewhere we're leading the nation in attendance, and I never want that to go unappreciated, especially a little drizzly rain out there, and everybody was there and having a great time, and we appreciate our Ohio State fans and students. Uh, second thing was a quick start. Once again, that was uh, emphasized, but everybody says they emphasize that, so I thought our coaches once again did a good job uh, getting that going, and most important, the players did. Champion efforts were uh, wide receivers, uh, or excuse me, on offense champions, Evan Spencer. Um, hard for me to say he's not one of our MVPs right now, the way he's playing for us. And I know statistically sometimes uh, it might not show up just because we spread the ball so well right now. But um, he starts on kickoff now. Uh, he was our one of our main guys on punt against Maryland when we had to tackle that uh, punt return. I just trust him with everything. And it's to the point where we're trying to find ways to reward him. You know, that was the one time we threw it to him three times right down the red zone. That was all me just trying to reward uh, a person that's selfless and just love who he is right now. Uh, Jalen Marshall is really much improved. He also graded a champion. Uh, tight ends, Jeff Hireman graded a champion. Uh, I'm not quite sure why Nick Vanette, I thought he played pretty good, but he must have had some missed assignments. Offensive line, Taylor Decker, Pat Elfline, and Jacoby uh, played uh, well. And then the player of the game was our tailback, Ezekiel Elliott at uh, tailback. You might say, well, JT Barrett, I think, was was he conference player of the week? JT was. Yeah, JT. And he could he could have played a lot better. You know, he could have played a lot better. So that's I, I really I love when our coaches do that. I mean, that's uh, that's there's nothing quite like a guy that thinks he played great and then uh, position coach uh, jumps right in the middle and say, this is what we could have done better. So offensively and. Uh, you evaluate it against a team that we had a lot of respect for. We considered them, I, I use the term, 6-0 and o team uh, coming into our home stadium. And uh, uh, But offensively, we could have played a lot better. Uh, that was not one of our, our better, our great days, but uh, we expect more. Uh, defensively, uh, created uh, three turnovers. Again, scored a touchdown. Uh, our third down defense was excellent. Uh, the negative is we gave up some hits on a zone play. That There was no excuse for that. I, I think six, seven, they ran the same play, and we didn't adjust well and, and made some mistakes. So uh, the champion efforts were Mike Bennett, played very well, uh, Joey Bosa, Tyvis Powell, and Josh Perry. Uh, the guy that played his best game was Duran Grant, graded out 90, 98%, had 12 opportunities, made 11 of them, and his best game is an Ohio State Buckeye. Uh, special teams, we had one punt. It went for 53 net. So our punter's doing a nice job. The coverage is doing a nice job. Kickoff, we didn't do as well. We have some injuries we're dealing with. Uh, Devin Bogart, still don't know the, the final analysis on him. Um, uh, Dante Booker uh, was pulled out of the game. And I'm thinking someone else on kickoff I lost. So we, we're going to have that conversation today uh, about how we're going to fill that uh, most important unit, that very important unit. With that said, I'll answer any questions for you. Front row, Bill. Yeah, you're halfway through the regular season. You were not particularly effusive Saturday. You're not right now. But given the injury to Braxton, given all that you've had to deal with, how happy are you with where the team is right now? I love coaching this team. I, I you know, when I look at our uh, champions and I see Nick Vanette and I see JT Barrett not under the champions, I really like, I want that mentality of, uh, you know, if our expectations are higher than the players of himself, that's a problem. And that happens a lot. You know, when you, you see a great player and, and we think you should be this, but the player doesn't think you should be that, the player usually disappears or just doesn't become a great player. Uh, but I love when a coaching, you know, and the good thing about JT Barrett, I, I, well, they had the conversation yesterday, but I, would, I wasn't a part of that. But I, I like the way when coaches say, okay, you're a Big Ten player league, but you, you didn't play very well. Here's what we can do better as opposed to always, boy, what a great job, what a great job, when it really wasn't. So I, I, I like the culture of the program right now. I like the players, the way they're being coached. I love their responses. And that's uh, enjoy coming to work every day when you have a team like that. And could you kind of give a quick little scouting report on Penn State? Obviously, good defense. Number one defense in the country as far as rush defense. Very, very well coached up front. Uh, good personnel uh, up front. They got a tough guy, Borland type middle linebacker. It's real active. I think he leads the team on tackles. Um, uh, they do a very nice job. Number one in, the, in America against uh, the run. Um, on offense, obviously, we got a lot of respect for that big quarterback, Hackenberg. And Hackenberg um, tremendous player. Um, 
statistically came out as sh uh, shoot uh, high high completion percentage. He struggled a little bit, but he's playing very well. And then they got a uh, just a boatload of tight ends. They try to all play them all, so it's a lot of 12, one back, two tight ends, 13, three tight ends, which in the past has given us problems as far as run fits. They don't run the ball particularly well right now, but they're a very good throwing team. Front row, Ken. Yeah, Herman, uh, could you elaborate on JT like? What is it that y'all saw Saturday that he wasn't doing well? Uh, you know, what, what kind of graded him down, I guess? In well, whenever you see a, a legal procedure, you know, that's the quarterback, you know, and uh, that's the leadership of the quarterback. And it happened one time earlier in the year. Um, I, I liked the way he started. Someone told me it went nine for nine or something to start the game. That's, you know, that's, that's we like this. That's obviously very good. But he, he misfired on a couple balls. You know, he had a throw a ball behind uh, Evan Spencer and missed on Dontre Wilson on a touchdown. There were a couple plays. Uh, but that happens. That's not when, when you see graded down, you know, you don't grade a guy down. You, you know, you coach him up to throw the ball better. Graded down is just the quarterback position. And uh, I think Tom will give you that, some insight more later when you visit with him. And how comfortable, and I don't know we ask you every, every time, but you go on the road, but it's only been a couple of times, but how comfortable are you taking him into Appy Valley, into the white shirts and all that kind of stuff on Saturday yeah. night? I mean, how do you think you will handle that? More comfortable now than several weeks ago. You know, uh, we did go on the road once, but obviously that 110 is different than 50-some. So it's going to be, we were there. And um, I remember, you know, Shelly and I are both like, that's, that's one of the top five atmospheres we've ever played in. And uh, we can expect that same type of um, uh, reception, so we'll be ready. But uh, how more, I'm more comfortable than I've been. It's not just the, you know, we have a new center who's not a new center anymore. And he's playing pretty good. Uh, by the way, he's, he, I know he rolled his ankle a little bit, but he should be fine. Uh, more comfortable than we've been, but still I'm glad we have Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday to get ready for it. You know, can I ask one other thing? With JT on that 33 yard run, he said, I think y'all had a screen call and they jumped it. Yeah. And and he makes all these decisions just like this. It goes 33. Though. What does that tell you about, I guess, the way he's come along as a decision maker, cool, keeping his cool, et cetera? Well, that might be a, the, uh, as good an example because a lot of times quarterbacks, you know, on a drop back pass when it's not there, a lot of times you will scramble. That's kind of instinctive. When a screen's not there, that's when you see guys twitch and panic and get a – because if you throw it down the field, it's a grounding call. Uh, not a grounding call, it's a legal man downfield. Yeah, so there's all kinds of issues. But I, I credit Tom Herman and I credit, that's not by accident. Those are a, a well coached player that understands the game. I, I, that was an impressive play. They, uh, they dropped eight guys into coverage right to the screen. He put his foot in the ground and went north south. That's, that's, uh, that's good stuff. All right, Clay. Coach, uh, different strokes, I guess, uh, from Mike Vrabel to Larry Johnson. Uh, what a two ends of the spectrum personality-wise, maybe the way they coach. A uh, little mellower kind of guy. How's that worked out, and does hiring him maybe mean you've changed a little bit as well? I, the only thing I'd say is on the, on the surface that might seem, I think they're very similar guys. Uh, extremely high high-end character people that are family-oriented guys that you want leading your, your players. Um, you know, Mike is a former NFL guy that maybe it's seen, but I, I, those two guys are very similar. Um, you know, uh, the way the Larry's a very intense individual. His practices are very meticulous like Mike was. So I'd say they're more similar than different. Uh, you know, Mike might let some colorful, uh, um, I'll turn my look, I don't want these language, but call, yeah, just uh, phrases or whatever. Uh, but other than that, they're very similar guys. Larry, more fatherly? I, I would say that. Yeah, I think that probably comes with – I don't know, though. I mean, uh, Mike, Mike Rabel did a heck of a job now. They're very similar guys. They're, they're two good – as good a coach as, as – you know, I just I love who they are. I love what they stand for. And my job is to make sure I have someone standing in front of them. They're high, high-end people that uh, take care of them. And both those guys uh, do. Far left, Doug. Urban, you talked a lot last year about wanting to have young guys ready to play, especially mm -hmm. in light of the Christian injury and that kind of thing. When you talk after the game about maybe just the second team not being where you want it to be, I mean, it seems like obviously at the most important position on the field when you lost your guy, you lost Braxton, you had a young guy ready. Is it in the other positions, is it not where you want it to be? It's getting closer. You know, the, the one area is concerned is defensive line. And Larry, if you saw, he tried to get, we played 10 defensive linemen Saturday. 
No, 10 didn't play great, but we're, we're pushing it as hard as we can. We had a team meeting and addressed that. I had a couple guys stand up that weren't doing their deal. And they were, uh, as, this, as you get deeper into the year, we all know it's, it's week seven. Our goal is to compete for a championship in November, and if you keep playing, you, you might have a chance to do that. And that's why everybody has to have value. So um, certain positions are, you know, right now are, you have Curtis Samuel and Rod Smith. We don't mind playing them at all. Um, you know, wide receiver, your backups are darn near as good as your ones. There's, who's our starting receiver? I couldn't, right now I couldn't tell you. But I like who's in, I like to see rotation. Our two tight ends are, you know, there's a very minimal difference. So there are some positions uh, we're, we're pushing. I push that as hard as I can. And we actually played some guys in the game Saturday that, you know, Mike Hill did show something. So Larry Johnson feels better about him right now. So that's the essence. When you see teams win championships, that's why. You know, you lose your quarterback on JT Parrott. But he's been here for a while. He's a, he takes it very serious. He's obviously, Tom Herman does a very good job with it. The ones that fail are the ones when those kids just, they're not ready. And that's the coach's fault. That's, that's the, the, the kid's got to be put in those situations. And he's also got to be a very honest, hard conversation if he's not ready. You, you've talked about with your offensive line and how it's coming along that, you know, maybe just the level of competition of the defensive lines you faced wasn't as good as what you saw against Virginia Tech. Maybe you thought Rutgers would be a step up. Did you learn anything more about the offensive line? And is Penn State a step up for that? Step up. Um, Rutgers was a step up. Um, you know, I think Maryland, Rucker, you're, you're getting better and better. And, and uh, I once again, I don't want to say that they didn't have a good defense line because they certainly did. Uh, we did not, the last two weeks, we haven't played as good offense, offensively up front as we expect. And that will, that will really surface this week if, if we, we have to play better in the offense line than we did Saturday. Coach, you've been praising your staff for their preparation and game planning for your quick starts. I'm wondering, as a team, if you're also recognizing an improvement in uh, mid-game adjustments, or is that something that's been consistent all along? That's pretty consistent, and I, I think that's that's easy for a coach to do. I, I, I don't want to use the word fun because that sounds kind of silly, but I mean, that's a coach, a coach for 30 years. You see something on the field, you make adjustments. You're expected to do that. It's uncomfortable sometimes to make sure your players are jump started from the get go. I mean, that's you know cheerleading stuff, and that's the you know the the heart to heart talks and the weekly you know motivation uh, during during the week getting ready for the game. So I just any time a team and a units come out and play well early, you know, because I've challenged them. I mean, that's really really challenged them, and they and they've responded. Talk about our coaches, and they've responded. Well, you've admitted being stingy with praise for your assistance. Um, and I think I'm using your words. What is it that they have done so exceptionally that you recognize them even after the game on Saturday? If a, if a, if a coach makes an adjustment during a game, you're supposed to do that. You're you're getting paid a lot of money. You're at Ohio State University. For me to say, hey, pat a guy in the back, say, well, that's really cool that you – no, that's, you're supposed to do that. As a matter of fact, we got an issue if you don't. Um, it's the other thing. It's the – to get the motivate to me, what's not easy is the motivation of 18, 19, 20 year olds with all this chaos going on in the world to get them to put their foot in the ground and go as hard as they can right from the big get go. And that's what I'm seeing our coaches do. That's why I brought that up. Right, we're right. Austin, Urban, uh, not just with JT, but the offensive line, the skill players, all those guys who are so maybe inexperienced the first few weeks. Did you all as a staff feel limited offensively? Uh, and how, how does that maybe compare to what you can do now? Yeah, um, you just look at the play sheet against Navy compared to now, and that's 70% greater than what it was. And that's because of the off number one quarterback, number two offense line, number three skill players. You know, new two, two new tailbacks, uh, one that's never played college football, and, uh, you know, he got hurt for a while. Um, and the other one, Rod Smith, didn't know he'd be here. And so that position has really grown. I think the receiver position, the quarterback, Offense line receiver has really opened up the playbook because they're much more mature than they've grown up fast. It seemed like there was a lot of things maybe you guys put in during the bye week and saw the Wildcats and things like that. How much more room is there to go as you get more experience? With the better your checkers, it's endless. I mean, you can, you know, Dontre Wilson, we went to a 10 grouping, um, excuse me, 0 1 grouping where there's no tailback and a tight end and, th and four wideouts. That was a result of having good four wideouts that we emptied and started doing some things. Uh, and you want to be able to keep them when you do that. 
know, I shouldn't tell you too much, but you keep them in a nickel or dime situation, now go run the ball at them real fast. That was the reason we do that. So there's, it's, it's really, as long as you have good checkers, you can keep going and going. That's where you got to be careful. How's Wilson, by the way? He, he got taken out on Saturday. He He's fine. Yeah. He's fine. He's cleared. Far left, Matt. Um, you dealt with your bye weeks. You mentioned the, how unusual that was. Penn State's played a game in a month. Um, they had a bye, a game, another bye. I'm wondering, preparing for them, does that change anything? Yeah, Do you prepare you for something unusual. You know, um, I don't think they're holding anything, you know, because they've had a couple of big games. But, you know, we spend about four or five minutes talking about that and move on. You just, you know, uh, Rutgers had a couple of things that they never showed. The bye week gives you that chance to work on some things. So I, I imagine we'll be, they have a base, but there'll be something new that we have already had that conversation about. Um, also, you talked two years ago when you played there, and you mentioned it earlier, the environment. And I remember you two years ago talking about you guys couldn't play a whole game, they couldn't, and yet the environment was what it was. I'm wondering two years later, with the NCAA making their decision that they made, are you happy about that, that this is, you know, Penn State is allowed to play in a bowl game? And well, I mean, I'm into it for the players, like I'm sure Coach Franklin is and Coach O'Brien was, and, and that was, uh, I, th I thought that was an uh, incredible atmosphere, which is a credit to Penn State's fans. I thought it was even better credit for those players on their sideline than ours because I've been in some national championship games, and you can't say they played any less in that day, on that day yeah, at Penn State two years ago. So I had a lot of respect for it. I knew a lot of those Penn State players. They did nothing wrong. They did nothing wrong. A lot of those kids were in scarlet and gray, did nothing wrong, yet they're paying the price, which is part of, I'm not saying that's wrong, it's part of the deal. But I just think that needs to be a shout out to those kids. I know I said something to our players, that's, that, that was unbelievable, the effort you gave and knowing at the end of the day, you're going to have to pay a price for someone else's mistakes. So I just think that's a credit to both teams. And last question, Rusty. Uh, Urban, last time you played these guys, you averaged eight yards to carry, went for 400 yards on the ground. There are changes that they've made since their number one against the run. Is it more than personnel? Are they doing? It's a good question. Uh, not many. Oh, I just I have a hard time remembering last year. You know, uh, I think we played very well that day, and it started rolling downhill on them. You know, I, I, it's a much different defense right now. I mean, that's really good rush defense we're facing. One more quick thing. You touched on this after the game right now, that Michigan State won by the exact same score you guys did. Is, there's no consideration that you guys might, that some of your players might think about, think ahead of what no. might be in line. No. I think if you played a really bad team, I think that happens. You try not to let that happen. But going on the road in front of 110,000 people and uh, knowing that we didn't play great, uh, we did not play great. Saturday, and uh, we expect to play great. And so that's that's once again to go back to when I read this, and I didn't really really think about it. When I see Nick Vanette and J.T. Barrett not great champions, that's tough coaching, and I, I like that.